Well, I'm sitting outside the conveyor belting place. Uh, if somebody remembers my old videos, uh, this is where when I bought uh, when I bought that my first triaxle step deck. And people were always bugging me, you know, you, you got to protect the floor, protect the floor, right? And so I came here and I bought a whole bunch of conveyor belting. And I went to a place in Cambridge and they bolted that conveyor belting to the floor of this brand new trailer. So, of course, they had to drill holes, right? But I thought, hey, now I'm golden. Except that those guys, they installed the, uh, the screws or the bolts were not flush with the deck. They were, you know, like this. Uh, and so they were sticking out. And of course, on the step deck, most of the time you, you carry something on skids or pallets, right? And it was a big issue when loading pallets because the, they would get caught on these, on the heads of the screws. And so eventually I had to take it off. It was like a wasted, wasted effort. And of course, I ended up with holes in the deck. <laughs> so never listen to experts on YouTube unless you know their qualification and what they have done before. That's just my friendly advice. But, um, and, but of course, now after, you know, that I'm working with uh, 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 IGN, a low boy trailer, I would never ever buy a trailer with aluminum floor that's just crazy you know like yeah you're saving a little bit on weight but it it'll start getting scratched you'll get holes right it's so much easier to deal with uh, lumber you know like wooden deck like on IGN like I don't have to wear okay it cracks it it breaks like what's the big deal but now there's a new material it's been uh, in existence for a few years it's called uh, a rumber, R-U-M-B-E-R, -E like uh, rubber plus lumber, a rumber, and it's uh, exclusive, exclusively made and sold by the this uh, rumber place in Texas. And it looks like basically it's like a rubber, but it's looked like a like boards, or they can cut it into uh, like a plates or a square, or whatever, right? And usually they started selling them for people that were moving horses because this kind of surface it's not slippery it's not afraid of any spills it's easy to clean and it lasts forever and it's just a little bit tiny bit heavier than than lumber than wood or epiton but it's uh it's expensive it's expensive but you know if i was changing the floor on my trailer i would definitely order this a rumber it looks like really it's like black you know it looks really good so it's made out of some uh, recycled tires and rubber and stuff like that so it's not afraid of any acid or diesel fuel oil you know it's a uh, very very you know heavy duty material so and nothing has been going right today. So today is uh, Wednesday. I'm loading tomorrow. And in the morning, I ordered my permits because I talked to the shipper. Like my paperwork says the weight will be anywhere from 78,000 to 91,000. And it's a, you know, pavement milling machine called planer. Uh, road tax 60B or like 600 series I think and I checked online found the website and yeah they say um, it can weigh 91,000 pounds but only if it has like full fuel and it has a tank of water like of course that's how it cuts the pavement right and they said if the tank is full of water then yeah, it'll, it'll weigh 91,000 pounds. So it's like the operating weight with everything. But then if you look at the shipping weight, it's anywhere from like 65 to 75 or 78,000 pounds. And so I decided not to wait till I'm there, till I scale it. And I just added, I ordered permits for, I put in uh, 81,500 pounds. So I know, I know it's, it's lighter than that. So 
and I ordered this morning. I went to the website of my uh, of my permit company. Like I, I try to do it myself, right? But now I just I do it myself in Canada for Canadian provinces, but in U.S. because there's more jurisdictions, and I already know these guys. So, but now instead of emailing them my permit request, I do it straight through from their through their website. And it's much quicker for them because everything is in digital form, right? They can just copy and paste, you know, and it shows all the spacings, you know, Excel spacings, how many tires you have, you know, size of tires, your kingpin to your last axle. They need that for some reason, like the distance between the kingpin on the neck to the last axle. So anyway, I did all that for New York. PA and New Jersey and I'll be going to Newark, New Jersey. So this thing, somebody bought it from a Dominican Republic. So it's going to the port of Newark and then it goes on a boat and goes to South America, right? Or whatever, Dominican Republic. And uh, yesterday I, I ordered, I canceled my order on Amazon for the second uh, Flowmaster Super 10 because they sent me a wrong one, right? So I cancel that one, meaning that I want a refund. And then I found this, where I'm sitting here, I found this, there's a exhaust place just down the road there. I don't know, two, 300 meters. And I remember that these guys were pretty close. That's how I found them, you know, I was doing something at that exhaust shop and then I was walking around and I saw this and they sell used and new conveyor belting and, and all kinds of mats, you know, like rubber mats. And and so they, I ordered that mu that muffler. The guy says, yeah, we have it in the warehouse, in our warehouse, so they just need to ship it to us. And they did it Monday, but for some reason, he says Monday, they only order it in the afternoon for some reason. I was, I was talking to them in the morning, or maybe I talked to them in the afternoon. But anyway, so they ordered it after 12 o'clock and they said maybe that's why I didn't come in yesterday, Tuesday. So I just, you know, I left my hotel because I only booked my room until today. So I did my permits and I drove over here instead of calling them just because they promised to call me when they have the muffler. But, you know, I thought maybe they forgot or something. So I, I came here at nine o'clock and did the video for comparison, you know, like before and after. So I'm doing before with the Super 44 I have now. I did the cold start and I did the driving. And I thought, okay, then, you know, once they install the Super 10s, we'll do the after part, right? I'll do a cold start and driving. Got my, got my camera in here, all ready to go. And I go inside, of course, wearing my mask. I don't care if people look at me like I am I'm from Mars I'm wearing a mask anywhere where I'm near people when I go inside the store and the lady says uh, sorry what what did you what did you order I said yeah I talked to you on the phone yesterday Serge Sergey I said uh, Flowmaster Super 10 and she's like thinking well I guess they're busy right but not that busy but she says oh yeah uh hold on so she calls the boss and the boss says yeah for some reason it didn't get shipped yesterday but he says it can be shipped pretty much any time we can i said when do you when are your deliveries come in usually right and they said oh it can be can be five o'clock at night can be can be nine in the morning can be 12 1 in the in in the in the middle of the day but basically he says chances are it'll be here around lunchtime and i said okay i'll just hang tight in in the area because you know from here it's about one hour to my yard in cambridge and i said uh i'll just hang tight here so the problem is there's nowhere to go because all the coffee shops are closed you know, even if you find a coffee shop, well, of course they exist here, but you cannot go inside. You still have to sit inside your car, you know, which is fine with me. Like, what's what's the difference? Except that, of course, you know, when you're inside, it's nicer. You see people, 
you know, coming in and going out. So at least you feel like you're part of the crowd. So yeah, my muffler is not here. Uh, but permits are ordered. So now I need to do, I'll do it later today because my guy that gives me the bond, he's in, he's in Washington state or Oregon, Washington. So it's like three hours back that time, right? So I'll do it at lunchtime. I'll just email him and I have all the paperwork. So I have to send him my uh, doc receipt and uh, you know, the invoice from the auction where the guy bought it and he'll set me up for the bond and charge my credit card for 450 bucks. And then later today I need to order, I need to book the escort because I will need one escort or one pilot as they call them in New York because of the length. But this machine is gonna be eight feet, uh, two inches wide. So legal width, it's gonna be less than 11 feet tall. So I'll be legal height, it's just heavy. So let's say 145,000 gross. And I asked the uh, permit company, I said, you know, I'll, I'll pay extra, just send me on the, if they allow me, if they would allow this, just send me on the toll highway, like I-90 and uh, I-190. So it's much faster instead of doing that circles inside Buffalo. And so if that works, I'll just take, uh, you know, I-190 south and east, and then uh, I-90 east to uh, 390 south and then 86 new york 17 and then end at uh, i-81 in new york and just cross into pa and that's it because I, I have to get out of new york uh by saturday 12 o'clock because there's no driving in new york state with oversized load uh, after lunchtime on saturday but this one is so I can drive until 12, so that uh, leaves me plenty of time. And uh, we agreed that delivery will be sometime on Monday. So there's no rush. It's only uh, what I'm loading near Windsor, Ontario. And that's one more thing, you know, I got to do is because I'm loading tomorrow morning. I cannot sit here for too long. I got to get to my truck and I got to drop the trailer again and do that procedure with the Jeep, but in reverse order. So now I need to pick up the Jeep and move it into my position because I only have one spot. So I cannot let the Jeep sit forever on the other guy's uh, property, like rental property. So I'll have to drop the trailer, hook up the Jeep, move the Jeep into my space, drop the Jeep, hook up back to the trailer. And, uh, and then, yeah, I need to drive at least two hours today in the truck because that place where I'm loading, it's about uh, two and a half hours away. And they open at uh, 7 or 6.30 or 7, but I said, yeah, I'll be there at 7.30. So I want to I wanna drive at least two hours. There's a flying J not too far from uh, Windsor. And then from there, it's like half an hour, half an hour to the shipper. And uh, yeah, and then I'll be in position to load. And uh, this will be the first no, this will be attempt number two to use my uh, fancy spreader bar from JC Trailer as a two plus two booster, right? I have the shims. I'm a bit, a bit nervous about this, but I hope it'll work. I did not change the shim and the deck because this is only 80,000 pounds. Uh, guys told me that, you know, I should go for the biggest shim, the red one, which is one and a uh, half an inch uh, shim uh, with anything over like 100,000 pounds. But for now, I have the blue shim in there, which is medium size. I think it's one fourth of, a, of an inch, one quarter of an inch. And, uh, and then I'll just need to shim the position between the trailer and where the spreader bar attaches and we'll keep the top pins out, right? And just use the, not sure how many shims to use, but at least I'm gonna close that gap and that gap is like half an inch or something or one inch. So I'll just go maybe one quarter over that gap. So maybe, you know, so otherwise there's no effect because of that gap, right? So that's it. Oh, and 
in, a, in other news is that I emailed the uh, hail trailer. I said, hey, I'm delivering a load in Newark on Monday. And of course, you know, hail trailer is like two hours away, one and a half hours away. And I said, uh, I'm just checking in to see if you have that part from Fontaine, that bracket or brace, whatever they, they, they need to install at the bottom of the, my neck to reinforce it. And they said, um, hold tight, let us contact Fontaine, the plant. And then later yesterday, they sent me a message, a copy of the message they got from Fontaine saying that the ETA for my part is uh, Wednesday, May 13th. I said, perfect. Then I'm just going to deliver this thing Monday and just hang tight till Wednesday and bring my trailer over there and they'll install it. Maybe you'll go back to the same hotel where I was before. Just drop my, leave my trailer over there. And so great. So, you know, next week we're going to get that uh, bracing, bracketing, whatever. And so my trailer should be good to go for super heavy loads. And, um, Next couple of weeks, we're just waiting for the guy to finish uh, financing uh, paperwork. Uh, a customer bought uh, two excavators from Canada and they're going to Newark uh, again. So I'll be doing like this, you know, like a bus. So two excavators, I gave him a discount. I said, yeah, give me a Two of these, I'll give you 10% discount. And uh, so one is like 86,000 pounds. And the, but the other one is pretty big, 117,000 pounds. So that would be, again, that would be, if I do that one, that would be the heaviest load I did so far. Because so far, the heaviest I did was that pile driver, 107,000 pounds. Like real, 107K. So 117 would be exciting. But the good thing is that it's not that far, you know, from Montreal. Uh, Quebec to New Jersey, it's less than 400 miles, you know, which is perfect. That's what I like. It's heavy, short distance, HSD. Stay tuned.